So, um, may I do a little thought experiment with you before we begin this video? I promise, I have a point. Okay, so just in your head, picture your favorite thing. I don't care what it is, an album, a movie, a hobby, a person, just when someone asks you, what are you all about? That first thing that pops into your head, what is that? Okay, do you have it? Good, good. Now like, focus on it for a bit. Really dwell on what that thing is, that very first thing that popped into your head. Really dwell on it, really sit with it, and really just take in your love for that thing. Really just recognize the love that you have for that thing that is so important. Like, really, really focus on it. Again, I promise I have a point with this. Okay, now I want you to imagine that you wake up one morning and you don't know how to love that thing anymore. If it's a food, imagine putting it in your mouth and tasting nothing. If it's a movie, imagine watching it and nothing happens in your heart. This thing that was like a, the center of your identity, a crux of who you were, a foundation of your personality, just doesn't engage with you anymore. It does nothing. And when you try to engage with it, you just feel empty. Now imagine you run a channel almost entirely based on you describing your love for that one particular topic. Oopsie. I hate to get heavy-handed about it, but this is what happened to me in 2021. I fell out of love with music. It wasn't like an all-at-once thing, but throughout the year, every single album I would put on would just do nothing to me. People would be super hyped and super excited about stuff, and it's not even like I hated everything I heard. I just couldn't feel love or hate. I felt nothing when listening to most music this year. And with each passing record, I would feel less and less of anything. And I started to drown in the tidal wave of the sheer volume of music. All of it just started blurring together, nothing upon nothing upon nothing. 2021 was basically the year of Three Stooges Syndrome. All of it trying to shove its way into the door and none of it getting through. At least to me, it felt like that. This was the year where I had to genuinely consider if I really liked music at all anymore. Things really did get that bad for me, folks. Which... <sighs> Kinda sucks, cause in all honesty, 2021 was a pretty decent year for music. I mean, I think a lot of us would argue it was maybe a bit disappointing, but a lot of that was just because most of it was built up too damn much. We all wanted 2021 to come along and fix all the problems we had in 2020, and, uh... There are gunshots inside the Capitol. Afghanistan and the dramatic fall of the Capitol. I just... Popped a positive test on day six. You're telling me I could go into the office? Yeah, for the most part that didn't happen. But on the whole at least, you know, even with my weird involvement in music this year, I th there was still a lot of good stuff that came out. I still had to make some pretty drastic cuts to get it down to a reasonable number. Just so, so much came out in 2021. It's no wonder I burnt out so damn badly. Like. I just did not have space in my brain for all of the good music that came out this year. And again, I don't tell y'all this to just bring you down or have you cry about me or to gripe about my own problems. I have Twitter for that. I just want this fact to be crystal clear at the top of your minds when we start this list, because as a result of the year I had, my list is super weird, y'all. 
I don't know, it was a year where almost nothing stuck to me. Everything just slid off of my brain like it was coated in Teflon. So the stuff that did stick really, really had to leave a very strong impression on me for one reason or another. Hell, I'm not even sure the stuff that did end up making this list stuck because it was either just genuinely that good that it reached my brain even when it wasn't trying to engage with it or if I just legit have brain damage at this point. 2021 was a weird year. I think a lot of us can at least agree on that, right? So, weird list for a weird year. Honorable mentions. Me and your girlfriend playing dress up in my house. <laughs> poop. Poopy. Poopy poop poop. Poopy butt butt. Poopy butt. Poop that comes out of the butt. Poopy poopy butt fart. Butt fart from a poopy poopy butt with a fart butt from a big poopy poopy butt. Big farty poopy buddy gay. Gay booty butt butt do a fart in a big booty butt fart for gayness. Poop butt from a fart gay with a big poopy poopy fart. Deep poop. Large gay. Poopy fart fart butt butt poop poop squish squish Garfield John for president! Yeah, this thing was fucking dumb. This album was dumber than a box of freaking rocks, but... Y'all, Nico's got charm, she's got charisma for days, and god damn it, it, this album made me happy. It's dumb, but... It made me happy. F fuck you. <laughs> yeah, my brain's definitely damaged. You know, maybe this year really did break my brain. If that last segment is anything to go off of. But uh, y'all, holy cow, I actually ended up liking a 21 Pilots record. Like, I... 21 Pilots have just never clicked for me, but this thing, with its whole, like, light R&B millennial interpretation of what AM radio might sound like, whole kind of approach. It's so weird, and it took so long to grow on me, but after a few months, like... Yeah, no, I like this. I genuinely like this. And the thing is, too, I like this for pretty much the exact reason that the 21 Pilots fan base hates it. It's fun! It's fun, goddammit! And this is the only only 21 Pilots record I've ever listened to that's actually stuck with me for longer than like 10 minutes and it only grew more interesting the more listens I gave it and it stuck to me in a year where so very little actually did I mean props where they're due I still have no fucking idea exactly what they were trying on this thing but the fact that they even attempted and did so in such an interesting way, you know what? It won me over. It took its sweet time getting there, but it won me over. I don't know, I'm sure that's heresy to the 21 Pilots camp or whatever, but I, I don't care. It's good, and I liked it. I like it when your band makes good music. How dare your band that you like make good music? Oh, what a crime. Fans are weird, I don't like them. I did enjoy Creeper's last album. I liked it significantly less than their debut. The change in sound was just a little much to take in at the time, and the more time I spent with it, the less fond of it I actually was. That was an album that kind of had diminishing returns for me. This EP is actually supposed to be an epilogue or a continuation of that last record, and Wow, this slaps way harder. Why did y'all leave this stuff off the record proper? Sound is much more bombastic, while still having that different tone that the last record had. Like, but it's much more concise and tightly packed and laser focused. It's a very, just overall better experience. I mean, the last album definitely suffered from more than a bit of bloat, but this EP is like, super concentrated towards all that record's greatest strengths. It's honestly good to see that Creeper are still more than capable of putting out 
a project with that's nothing but pure bangers. And, and you know, I mean, I still have m m lots of hope for this band in the future. Here's hoping LP3 is gonna be fantastic. I bet it will. I'm really looking forward to hearing what else they do. Unless they break up again, which, I mean, fair warning, that is totally a thing that can happen. Remember last time, people? Like, they will pull that trick on us if they think they can get away with it. Wow, that was creepy, wasn't it? I didn't even know KKB did this kind of stuff, you know? I heard their last record and just thought they were like, you know, kind of kawaii core with like just subtle hints of spookiness just kind of sprinkled in there for fun. This EP, um, it ain't so subtle. God damn it, it's just, I, again, it's so much fun, I can't even deny it. What else can I say about this? It's short, it's sweet, and it's an absolute jammer. Even if I'm wondering if I got brainwashed listening to this thing, this thing totally slipped some subconscious shit I didn't want in there, and, uh, I'm gonna have to get an ice cream scoop to dig that out, aren't I? It's a wonderful listen from a wonderful band, but I'm just saying, if I end up talking some culty shit, you know to blame these adorable little bastards right here. You change the game. Hey Liz, how you doing up there, honey? Doing good? Awesome. I'm glad to hear somebody had a good 2021. But real talk, it is so nice to see Liz Fair on the winning side of things again. I wouldn't even say this is like her best record, or that it's this full-blown epic return to form, or even anything like that. It is a bit rough around the edges in places here and there, but god damn it. I'm just so happy that she's happy. Aren't you? Especially after the last decade or two. It's good to see her happy, carefree, and just having fun with music again. There weren't really a ton of, like, happy albums this year, and even calling this album happy is, uh, definitely a stretch. You can tell that, you know, she had a blast making this record, and, you know, it seems like she's in a much better headspace. She's definitely making better music because of it, and it's nice to see that she still got it, too. Like, you know, I gave this record shit about having, you know, about the closing track being about pussy. But you know what? That was a fun little song about pussy. How dare I talk smack about that? Uh, Liz, thank you for your goofy pussy song. <laughs> This record turned out so good, I'm kinda shocked I only have space for it in the honorable mentions. Honestly, this is one of the better metal albums I heard the entire year. Definitely one of the best symphonic metal albums I've heard in a damn decent long time. I don't know, y'all, maybe it's just me at this point. Like, out of any genre this year, I had the most trouble with metal. Like, a lot of the heavy stuff that came across my desk just did not connect at New Trivium. I'm sure, whatever, it's fine, I guess. New Carcass? Sure is Carcass all right. Hell, even a band like Death Heaven. Aw, oh, come on, this is just full shoegaze now. Even stuff I really was genuinely hyped for, like Between the Buried and Me, Mastodon, and even Gojira. I listened to those albums and it was just like, okay. Neat, I guess. I guess. I'm supposed to care, aren't I? Again, in a year where so much music, so much good music even just left me feeling numb. Just goddamn anything that could perk up my ears and make me pay attention to it was worth special marks. And this album? <laughs> How can you not pay attention to this? Like I said up at the top, this honestly was a pretty good year. When I had the stamina to pay attention to it at least. And this was definitely a good early sign of things. So atmospheric, so blissfully dark.
dark and eerie, and such savage vocals to help contrast the mood the music was putting forth. Good God, Tribulation is just so damn good at that thing they do. It's a shame Jonathan Holton is leaving after this one. Um, again, his guitar wizardry is a big part of what makes this and a lot of other Tribulation albums work. But you know, listening to it, Again, this reminded me that there are three other very talented artists in this band, and you know, hearing this album again made me realize they could probably still make it work. We could still probably get some really damn good stuff out of Tribulation, even if Jonathan isn't going to be a part of the band anymore. And you know, if nothing else, what a wonderful note to leave things out on. You know, honestly, best of luck to Jonathan and Tribulation in the future. I could see great music coming out of both of them. You know what? Best wishes. We can have both. People, we can have both. Let's have both and be happy. But I'm jumping off this drum set. You know who had a weirdly good year this year? Ska. Like, I'm seeing it bubble up like crazy in certain scenes again. It's definitely becoming a big deal on sites like TikTok. The hell, Jeff Rosenstock released a completely ska-ified version of his last record this year? And fuck, it's like the best thing I've ever heard him put out! It almost made this list! Good job, Jeff! Longtime ska veterans Five Iron Frenzy released their new record this year, too. A lot of folks slept on it, sadly, but, but it was fantastic. I honestly was going to cover this as my last single album review for the year, but me damn brain broke and I couldn't handle it. I'm sorry, guys. But just know that they absolutely delivered. It's another fun as hell record full of great tunes, socially conscious lyrics, and performances that knock it out of the park. Like, if Ska is gonna make, like, a full-blown comeback here, A, I am all for it. Pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. And B, um, please don't forget your elders on this one, because Five Iron Frenzy, even after all this time, are still out here making some of the best damn music of their entire career. And if nothing else, I really genuinely just want to give these guys props for being one of the few uh, Christian in quotes, Christian, bands that didn't go completely bug nutty after Trump was elected. <sighs> At least Five Iron Frenzy still rules, people. <laughs> Man, you know a black metal record has got to have something extra special in it when it can appeal to my plebeian ass. No, scratch that. When it can appeal to my plebeian ass in a hard year where I had trouble enjoying music at all. No, scratch that. In a That it can appeal to me in a year where I had trouble listening to music at all and still have kind of garbage production on top of that? This one honestly just hits. Again, it's the atmospherics at work on this record. It's the gorgeous blend of black metal and Kentucky bluegrass that on paper. <laughs> seems like it shouldn't work, but it absolutely does on this record. Just infinitely wonderful vibes all across this thing. The vibes were so good that even the stuff I didn't like about the record, like the production and some of the instrumentation, it all just kind of melted away. All of those nitpicks just evaporated under the warmth of some good, spooky, cerebral, and fucking wonderful black metal music. That's the key, then. That's what it is. Black metal needs more banjos. God damn, we found it. Get more banjos in black metal, please. You also probably shouldn't listen to me. I have no idea what I'm talking about. I ain't gonna do what I want If I get one life uh, Again, folks, Ska had a weirdly good year. Uh, do you like Ska? Check them out. How about a ska punk emo album about coming out as transgender? A ska punk emo album with hooks for 
days upon days that earnestly discusses the real struggles of transitioning while being a band and wrestling with a society that refuses to accept you and trying to play gigs while you're in the middle of transition and like god damn it's an album that hits so hard and is so emotionally just on you that I'm maybe a little embarrassed to admit I totally found this via TikTok. Piggy dipping! Piggy dipping at the piggy pond! I mean, look, TikTok has its ups and downs. I get it. It's a social media site. Of course it's trash. But you know, I have honestly discovered so much cool music through that app, both silly and sincere, and this is definitely one of the best things I discovered from the more sincere side of the app. Again, for the silly stuff. Give your girlfriend cuddling, cars. Fuck you, that record's a blast. Again, if you love ska, or if you love pop punk, sort of emo adjacent music, or if you're just looking for some more fantastic music from the LGBT and trans fronted bands, yeah, this is a must hear for the year. Also, be sure, I guess, be sure to follow me on that dumb app. I do stupid shit and things. I, I don't know, we have fun over there, I guess. Something a lot of casual uh, Nirvana fans don't know is uh, when Kurt Cobain was living with his first girlfriend, they actually decorated their house with drawings of diseased vaginas. Diseased... Vaginas. How did it get to over 1.4 million views? Diseased vagina? Really? Oh my god, it is so good to see Courtney LaPlante and company thriving again after the fallout from I Wrestled a Bear once. And when I reviewed Singles Collection a few years back, I was like, ooh. Ooh, 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 y'all, y'all, this is gonna be big. Pay attention to this, this is gonna be real big, this is gonna be really super good. And like, it's not even a case of, well, I told you so, it's just like a case of me just so happy to see these guys thriving again. Like, legit, this thing was absolutely dreamy. A blissful heavy metal record with astounding drum work, fantastic guitar hooks and melodies, and Courtney's always transcendent voice just leading the charge behind everything. Just, mm. oh, I miss this. I miss this so, so much. And I am so happy to see that this record is blowing up too. Like, I've seen this on a lot of folks' year end lists, and a lot of folks are just shocked about this brand new band, like, oh my god, these guys rule, where, where have they been? And, and you know what, y'all? It deserves to be there, it deserves the accolades it's getting. I am just so happy to see these guys back out there, kicking ass and making music that definitely deserves all the attention that it's getting, bar none, absolutely. Check these guys out if you get a chance. Rest in peace, I wrestled a bear once. Long live Spirit Box. And that's the honorable mentions, done and done. I told y'all this list was gonna be weird, so let's get into it proper, shall we? <laughs> Fuck, Nick! So, fair warning, not every pick that made my list this year made it here for its bleakness, but I mean, just given the state of mind I was for most of this year, yeah, there are more than a few that totally made it here because of how fucking dire and dark they were. Depression's fun. But Carnage, folks, oh my goodness, it's a haunting, echoey, swirling void of chaos, despair, hopelessness, and to my disfortune, I really identified with that this year. While cloaked in heavy metaphor and symbolism, it is definitely a record bred out of the pandemic. The loneliness, desperation, paranoid insanity, and the constant unyielding relentlessness of all those feelings just... 
I'm probably not doing a very good job selling this record, am I? It's a very dark record, but it's very beautiful in its darkness. Warren Ellis' arrangements are moody, cathartic, and very minimalistic. Yeah, minimalistic and sparse, and they just ooze out of this record like tears running down your face. It's not a sunshiny vibe, like at all, like very much at all, but it's still just so incredibly solid. It's an absolute must-listen record if you can handle it, because like, oof. Oof, y'all, oof. I know this is just kind of what Nick Cave and Warren Ellis kind of do, but like still, even by their standards, just... <sighs> Ow. <laughs> hey, speaking of dark, gloomy shit, but I mean... <sighs> Come on, y'all, how can I not include this record? If you heard this record last year, I'll bet this is probably on your list, too. Deathcore of the deepest, thickest, most pounding variety. Seriously, the mix on this goddamn record. It's like a sledgehammer cracking against the back of your skull, and I promise I mean that as a compliment. And not only that, but these guys also had the balls to go a little atmospheric and ethereal at times. Not too much, they definitely wanted to keep the vibe punishing and intense, but like, they were able to pull off the mix of heavy and like airy and dark and wistful. Unlike other bands I could mention this year, I guess. But you know, I, real talk, I honestly don't have a lot of metal on my list this year. I don't know, maybe I genuinely am just falling out of love with the genre. There wasn't a lot of metal that really did anything to me in 2021, but hey, if you love thick, deep, menacing, and relentlessly heavy deathcore, man, you gotta pick this one up. If it could even get through to me this year, like, y'all, there's something special going on here. Just, 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 oh. Yeah, there's your spot. What's up, little guy? I probably wouldn't have bought you if you weren't gonna end up on the list. Although I did buy Crawler, so... Haha! <laughs> Red herrings! Don't you love them? It was fine, it just wasn't, like, list-worthy. This particular spot, it was honestly a tough call between either this or that new Black Mini album that came out this year. Both bands released fantastic records, in my opinion, and... Look, just because something doesn't make my year-end lists doesn't mean it's bad. I don't know, this year I only had room for one cup of Wackazade, and, and if you only gotta give it to one band, I mean, like, oh, y'all. I feel like this one really is the one that deserves it, right? This was a fantastic record, especially for a debut. Like, what a first impression to make, am I right? It's indie rock, it's post-punk, it's free jazz, it's beat poetry, it's psychedelia, it's absolutely goddamn everything all tossed into a blender and playing at the same time. And it still works somehow. There probably was no other record that I listened to this year that played with my expectations more than this one. I would expect them to go one way, but not only would they not go the other, instead, they would carve out a completely different third way, like the Kool-Aid man busting through a brick wall. And more often than not, that third way had a kick-ass horn solo in it. Yeah, this is what any good experimental band should do. Just completely fuck with everyone's expectations and leave everyone guessing. And not only did these guys do an exquisite job at it, they did such a good job on their first record. Ultimately, it just gave me a little bit more of what I wanted than that new Black Mini did. And you know what, again, I wish them both the best of the luck. Again, people, we can have both. I'm in the cheap seat, watching the big show, hoping that one day. You know, I kind of hate to admit it. Um, I kind of fell off with country this year. I just, 
I didn't really listen to a lot. I was really bad at keeping tabs of everything that was going on in the country. What was going on in the country world? Yeah, we fancy like Applebee's on a date night. Oh, with a country girl there. Am I the only one not brainwashed? Holy shit. Good stuff did come out if you knew where to look, but like, I was coming up empty in a lot of places. Thankfully, I watch a lot of Spectrum polls. No shame, I totally got this as a recommendation from Mark. I mean, Mark's been singing her praises for years and years now, and after he recommended Emily to me for like, the 6,000th time, I, you know, I finally decided, you know what, I, I need more country, she put out a new record, sure. Uh, Emily, you're up, let's see what you got. For the Chiefs, singing for the Chiefs. Ah, so that's why Mark's been hounding people about her so much. She's delightful. I seriously get the hype. She's very, very talented. She's got such a sweet and sincere delivery, and her lyrics, while seeming simple on the surface, really do hit with way more emotional impact than you'd honestly expect. Especially if you happen to come from a religious background that fractured the shit out of you. Whoo boy, this record was great for that. Ow, my brain. But yeah, this was a fantastic listen from top to bottom. And her instrumentation and production is just on a whole other level here. And Emily is totally an artist y'all should be paying attention to. Especially if you're in a country like Emily is hopefully a rising star in this field. I would love to see her get more recognition and more appreciation for the stuff she's doing. I went to check out some of her back catalog too and you're like, yeah, folks, she's good. She's real, real, real damn good. Compared to what else is out there. Am I the only one who poops his pants for America? For freedom. Give Emily some love. She definitely deserves it. <laughs> I mean, big shocker, right? Yeah, Silk Sonic on the best. Uh, yeah, everyone's putting this on their list this year. Fuck, I think I even saw a few metal sites put this on their album of the year list. Hell, if anything, I'm the one being a contrarian by having it so low on mine. Time was a factor here. This was a late year release. I didn't get a ton of spins with it before I had to finalize things here. And, um, you know, even though I have listened to this record a few times, um, like, I like it. I really, really like it. But, you know, it is what it is. I do understand the hype behind it. It is a really, really good R&B record meant to evoke the glitter and suaveness of the 60s and 70s soul music. Don Cornelius would be proud if he were still with us today, people. It evokes that vibe so goddamn well. And it's such a fine imitation of the thing it's trying to knock off that I don't even care that it's a knockoff. It's a solid copy. It's like a clone console. It does everything I want it to do, even if it's not the real deal. I ain't complaining. Thank you, Analog. It's a wonderful throwback, but I mean, it's not really trying to be anything else other than that, is it? Like, they only had one particular goal in mind in making this record, and that was just to funk the fuck out, but like, man, they did it. They got a 100% on the assignment, and they got extra credit. So, like, I mean, I can accept it for what it is. It doesn't have to be anything else, really. I don't honestly have much more to say about this. Pour yourself a Gavassier, settle next to a sweet piece of action by the fire, and just groove. I am way too white to be trying something like that. Shame on me. I feel like a bulldozer, drooling and grinding. My pussy. Pussy like a bulldozer. I mean, I could just stop the synopsis right there, couldn't I? Uh, but real talk, uh, black dresses are making some of the most amazing hyper-pop, proto-industrial, noise-adjacent stuff that I've come across in quite a bit, you know? It's music that I really have a hard time even describing, like, what is this? What is this music? I have a hard time even illustrating to you what this music is supposed to be about. 
and that's me damn job. It's equal parts abrasive and soothing, equal parts tuneful and tuneless, an absolute stormer with a weirdly contemplative and wistful sort of ethos behind it. Like, God damn, it breaks my heart hearing everything these two have gone through over the years. I mean, we only recently got their stuff back on streaming. I'm glad to see them finally kind of come out of their shells a bit after everything that they've gone through. Because, you know, they put out a damn fine record this year, and they deserve to reap the success and benefits off of it. Like, you know what? Go out to their band camp, go stream them, go show your support, go buy merch and do all that fun stuff. Again, pussy like a bull does. Do I need to say this a third time? <laughs> you just love a good, bright, sunshiny pop record? Just an absolute glitter bomb of great production, chirpy instrumentation, and lyrics that just make you want to die. Whoo, Jetty, um... You had me figured out this year, huh? Make no mistake, sonically, this record is absolutely gorgeous. A delicious piece of pop brilliance that mixes indie rock with the most scrumptious electronic melodies and oodles and oodles of sheer blissful, bright, and glittering pain. It's one of those records where if you're not paying close attention to the lyrics, you can almost trick yourself into thinking this is just like an innocent little record full of, like, summer bops, or whatever. But, um, if you even take a small moment to analyze the subject matter she's singing about, especially if you're not in a great headspace, um, this album is a machete dunked in glitter. And again, I m promise I mean that as a compliment. Maybe it's just because I was in a weird place mentally this year, but this album just really spoke to me, and even if it doesn't speak to you, the absolutely shrieking sense of melody and prettiness should do something for you. Honestly, check this one out. It's a great record to dance around in your room with, just bounce on your bed and have fun to listen to it while you just bleed. to Carolina, I need mountain air. Got season in the cast, ironing some color in my hair. Again, I honestly didn't hear a lot of great country this year. I know it was out there, but uh, I either missed a lot of it or a lot of it just didn't leave an impression. I, I don't know, if you knew where to look for the good stuff, you could still find it out there. And of course, some of the best things, like many things out there, we're hiding with us amongst the gays. Ah, uh, we try to keep this stuff for ourselves, but fine. We'll share if you're nice. Seriously though, uh, Deem here absolutely killed it with their latest release. Very stripped down, very humble, very lo-fi, and distinctly Southern country music with just that right amount of traditionalist Americana, just that right kind of southern twang to it. And the topics that they're covering here, topics that cover a distinctly queer experience, I mean, someone who waited until they were 30 goddamn six to come out of the closet can definitely identify with a song like I Never Came Out, like, homie, please, I... I feel attacked. How dare you steal pages out of my diary like this? But they put out a wonderful country record. And again, how often do we get a country record like this? Eh? Like legit, dig them up, show a lot of support and love. Their next record actually got crowdfunded, so it looks like they're gonna have a bigger budget to work with. Again, like big gay country. We love a slice of big gay country. Pansexual, but it counts. Can you tell I've been posing this way God, another gorgeous bit of pop music here. Just luscious, vibrant, and sun-soaked in all the right places, with just that teensy lingering thread of darkness in it. Like, just a hint. Not too much, not too 
not too blunt. It's not a dark record, but you listen to songs like Posing and Bondage and Savage Good Boy, and you're like, oh, it's a record that keeps a wonderful balance between all of the tones it tries to evoke. If you aren't paying much attention, you can honestly just lull back and get washed away in its gorgeous and splashier moments. Only for one of those darker tunes to kind of sneak up on you and kind of like smack you on the back of the head. What the hell was that? But the record as a whole, it's honestly just such a beautiful and dreamy experience. Michelle has such a pretty, dreamy, whispery soprano. Like, God, this woman, she could probably sing about a dog fucking a pumpkin and still make it sound like the prettiest thing on earth. I loved her performances on here. I loved the production of this record. I even loved her songwriting even though it's clear she's never been to Kokomo, Indiana. I actually grew up near Kokomo, Indiana. Fun fact, I'm very familiar and uh, no. I mean, take it from a Hoosier here, um. <laughs> Fuck y'all, Tyler's still got it. Again, if you're into hip hop, this is probably really high on your list too. It almost kind of goes without saying this here, but like, man, people, Tyler just delivers, you know? I really love the arc he's taken on his last three records too, where he's allowed himself to be more personal and introspective and just kind of reflect on himself and who he is and his own desires. And on this album specifically, on the inner growth he's gone through over the last decade or so. Like this album was a real exercise in maturity, you know? I mean, honestly, it's just so refreshing to see Tyler break out of his shell and learn to move on from his past and what a small but certain screamy, loud, and annoying aspect of his fan base may still give him shit for. I love how he's just like full-blown, fuck y'all, I don't care, I'ma make my own music, and fuck y'all if you don't like it. You know, he's out here like, fuck the haters, fuck the people who just want me to do Cherry Bomb over and over again, I'm gonna grow the fuck up with or without you, so get on and get fucked. It's such a bad impression, why do I insist on breaking it out? That particular message on this record, I know that was one I certainly needed to hear this here. Hey, Tyler, congrats on being the artist you want to be, dude. Just bravo, man. You know, Ty, I think I will call you if I get lost because you seem to know where you're going these days, and I respect the hell out of that. Oh, wow, people. Everyone told me to check out the new turnstile. Absolutely everyone. They'd be like, oh, Crash, you have to hear the new turnstile. The new turnstile's so good. Please tell me you've spun the new turnstile, Crash. And I'd be like, oh, turnstile? That, that band from like a few years back that was just doing like New York hardcore ripoffs? They're okay, I guess. It's so good! You have to hear it! Oh, I, I need your thoughts on it right now! I want you to put this record on it and you tell me your thoughts on it right now! I need to have your thoughts on thoughts on right now! Dude, this is not the air to be pestering me, homie! But, when I eventually did get to listening to this record... Okay, y'all weren't kidding, it really is pretty goddamn good, and it? When the hell did this band grow up as much as they did? This record was, like, genuinely impressive. Again, I get why y'all were so hype about it, because where the fuck did this thing even come from? Shit! It was loud, it was fun, it was chaotic, and the production is something entirely different. It's gorgeous. Like, make no mistake, this is a hardcore record through and through, but it's filtered through this weird kind of post-punk kind of indie rock sound. It sounds almost like, like a post-punk record, but it doesn't lose any of its fun or its intensity. It's nuts. Hot take. I think Turnstile made a better AFI record than AFI have made in freaking years now. Like, this record maybe did get a little overhyped this year, just real talk, but sometimes things do get hyped for a genuinely legit reason, and I'm happy that that was the case with this album. Just, God, good work, Turnstile. Oh my God, you have 
grown so much from back when you were just Crow Mags ripoffs. <laughs> I almost hate to cover this one up with the JPEG. What a dream of a record. What an amazing debut. So relaxing, so chill, so hopeful and positive and healing. Like, man, you want a record to cheer you up when you're in a dark place. This is a good one to have on hand, folks. The production is absolutely gorgeous. The instrumentation is the perfect blend of soul, R&B and chill wave and Arlo's fantastic angelic voice like I don't know what else to say here you just this is one of those records you put on and just let envelop you whole just like oh speaking as someone who suffers from chronic anxiety and had a particularly anxious year yeah this was one I kept on the ready for when those dark clouds started brewing overhead. This album is so good at relieving pain, you could honestly store it in a first aid kit. Just please, if you miss this one in 2021, do yourself a favor and catch up on this gorgeousness. Just, mm, 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 mm. Y'all, I really liked this album. Even with all the success that he had this year, I still say a lot of y'all are sleeping on this kid. Hell, I was a fan of Seven, his debut EP. Anybody remember that? I don't know, a lot of folks wrote that one off, but when I heard it, I could just tell like, ooh, ooh, oh. LNX, man, you got way more going on here than you're letting on. And you know, I'd say he really one-upped himself on Montero. He did a fantastic job, in my opinion. I was more than impressed. From the amazing production, to the fantastic use of features from folks like Miley Cyrus and Doja Cat, to the shocking amount of depth and real raw emotion in the lyrics, like, I don't know, did you think the Old Town Road guy was gonna break your heart? Cause motherfucker brought the goddamn sledgehammer out for this one. God, don't hurt me, Montero. LNX got a taste of the fame, spotlight, and that whole A Star Is Born level of overnight success that a lot of young artists only dream of getting. He climbed to the top of that mountain and found out just how much it absolutely sucks. How much darkness you have to confront from a corrupt and very fucked up industry, from fans who claim to support you but will turn on you at the, a single moment's notice, and even a lot of the darkness from within yourself that you have to battle with. Like, making all your dreams come true does not make your inner demons any less quiet. If anything, it gives them a goddamn microphone. But you know, I appreciated this record for its honesty, its frankness, and its outright unwillingness to compromise. And most important of all, it's gayness. It's so gay. That's why we're here. Thank you for the gay. We appreciate it. I know I did. Yeah, that's a mood. That was totally the mood. Fuck me up, Backy. Come on, fuck me up. I mean, y'all know me. I'm such a little bitch baby when it comes to industrial or industrial adjacent music. I, I'm a motherfucker that needs melody. I need a coherent beat. I need something pretty to cling on to. I don't know, you put something like Mersbo in front of me. <laughs> and I just break. But if Industrial was gonna find a way in for me, it was totally gonna be in this absolute year of fucking darkness. And this album, y'all, oof. This motherfucker right here, it's dark, it's penetrating, and it's absolutely disgusting. 
gusting with power. The ferocious and lacerating hooks and Backwash's amazing ability to spit bars like they're crossbow bolts aimed at your neck. Y'all, this was just too good to ignore. Even if you aren't into industrial or some of these more noisy, kind of kind of harsh genres, I feel like this is the kind of record that can bridge gaps for you. It certainly did for me. It's hard, it's ferocious, it's lyrics hit from an insanely dark but very real and relatable place. It's an album that cuts and leaves a scar. But y'all, it's worth risking the scrape to just understand how amazing music with this particular kind of edge can be. You know, even if I hadn't been in hell mode this year, I still feel like this record would have connected with me. It's just damn good music. I, I, you must give this a shot. Abso-fucking-lutely, you must. I mean, let's just be real about it. Black Sailor Moon could kick Black Goku's ass any day of the week. You know it's true. <laughs> Your soul rising as a body gets closer to death. You know, I still don't have a good answer for my backdrop being Spoiler City for the best list, but like, I don't know. I want y'all to know I bought this because damn, it's good. Honestly, I just picked this one up out of sheer curiosity. Last year, she dropped an EP that got Femi requested, and you know, I ended up really liking that, and that EP grew on me the more I listened to it. Like, it was kind of a slow burn, that one. So I figured, you know what? Oh, she released a full record this year? Why not? We'll give it a try. That last record was very, was very nice, very chill. I definitely appreciated it. And then I put on the first track to this record, and it's like... <laughs> Ma'am, how dare you go this hard? I was not expecting Lil Sims to blow the hinges off like she did on this one. Now, granted, I'm not as familiar with most of her past work, but like, man, she went off on this one. She went full cinematic on this record, people. She didn't hold back a goddamn thing, and it works. Like, it's huge and bombastic in its best moments, but it still feels like it's coming from a very personal and a very intimate place. I don't know, as someone who can also be pretty introverted, she really covers the topic of the whole introvert's dilemma, you know, longing for some kind of intimacy with people that works, when most forms of social intimacy just, um... Not only does she tackle it, but she tackles it with so much bravado and so much pomp and so much grandiosity it's kind of uncanny and then you throw on the additional stigmas of race and gender that society dumps on people who aren't fucking lily white and male and adhere to the fucking conservative blah blah whatever i, mean, I don't know y'all it's hard being an introvert and i'm a white dude I got all the privilege in the world. Imagine throwing all the extra bullshit on top of that. Ah, like this record just goes for it. And that's what I ultimately loved about it so much. It goes the whole nine on every single facet, on its production, on its lyrics, on its instrumentation, on its song, just every single thing that this album tries, it tries to the fullest degree and it honestly pulls it off. God damn, Lil Sims absolutely won me over this year, and whoever Fimi requested that EP last year, I officially owe you a beer. But not in person, please respect my space. I'm very shy! I told myself I wanna die, so how am I supposed to live? slept on this one. Oh, y'all, I basically told you as much when I reviewed Transgender Street Legend Volume 2. When Nat finally dropped that full length, it was going to slap. And like, y'all, it does. Seriously, why ain't y'all streaming that shit? Stream that shit. This album is so good, it almost feels like a flex. You know, Nat is just out here trying shit out, just doing what she thinks she can get away with and just 
getting away with all of it. This album opens with a Sufjan Stevens ass 10 minute magnum opus beast of a thing. And it held my attention from back to front, a 10 minute thing. Y'all know I got no attention span, and I listened to that. It never once felt bloated or pretentious. It was just banger after banger after banger of heartbreaking, emotionally charged, really sad and really heartfelt bangers. Like, again, this is another one of those ow albums, but it's, it's a good owl, people. It's a good owl. Apparently the album that was going to be her full length debut, You Are Not Alone Enough, is still going to be happening at some point. And ooh, y'all after hearing this, uh, oh, I'm excited. I I'm excited to see what else Nat makes happen here. She's proved she's capable of pulling all the stops out on this release. So I, I am very, very interested in what happens next. In the meantime, though, I need to learn how to pronounce this one. How do you pronounce this? That's my best guess. Sounds like something MC Ride would scream. Jesus. The first time I heard Kin, it was just astounding. I love this fucking record. I can't even wholeheartedly tell you why. Or better said, I probably shouldn't. I mean, at the end of the day, it is a Whitechapel album. It's got all the sonic elements that make this band wonderful. The instrumentation is searing and absolutely wicked. I love how they went just like a teensy bit more soft and kind of cushy in places, but not like to a death heaven degree or anything. I didn't even hate that death heaven album. It's just like, yeah, they're just shoegays now. And Phil Bozeman's scream here is just more blood soaked and charged than ever. I mean, y'all, the music is still very intense, very Whitechapel, but, oh, that's nothing compared to the lyrics. Oh my, oh my goodness. It's such a touchy topic as to why I like this album so much. Um, full disclosure, I've been in therapy for the past five or so months here, and it's been a very illuminating experience. Let's put it that way. I've been facing a lot of trauma and a lot of inner demons I thought I had buried and beaten a long time ago, and like facing all that stuff just upfront and ugly and personal is, um, not easy, to say the least. Yeah, this year I wrestled with a lot of trauma that I never had addressed and I never really took any time to work on. And like, again, Phil, were you stealing pages out of my diary, dude? Because how dare you make something so beautiful with that kind of ugliness, dude? Fuck. It's an album about confronting yourself and dealing with your trauma. You know, those feelings of wanting to save your younger self from the miserable fucks who hurt you. The seething anger you feel when looking back on how powerless you were to stop these goddamn bastards and the red-eyed revenge you crave against those mother fuckers and the stark realization that the only way you will get away from all that ugliness and find any peace or wholeness in yourself is by learning to let go. Learning that you can't save yourself from your past, but you sure as hell can cut the chains that anchor you to it if you're willing to do the work to cut them. I don't know, it's a heavy record. It's a very, very hard album for me to talk about because it hits from such a 
personal place and like god it felt like phil was singing about me like me personally the whole time i was listening to this thing and like this is getting way too serious i'm gonna go put the dick on and try to get some laughs nope still traumatized <laughs> was so close to being album of the year for me because it genuinely was that year for me. This album deals with the thing that Kristen Hader is just best at drawing out in her music. Trauma. And like, in my own way at least, I've been confronting a lot of trauma this year. And the themes of religious indoctrination and dehumanization in this album, oh, holy shit, they tore like a fucking wheat thresher to the damn chest. The whole damn thresher to the chest. And all of it is done so viscerally, so hauntingly, and with such absolute force, and with haters' amazing screams backing every... <clears throat> that ruined the moment. Everything up, my god. God, this record, it just, it places the boot firmly on your neck and by God, do you feel every crevice of its soul pressing you into the concrete. Just, oh, fuck, this album hurt. And then for her to drop the major bombshell and reveal that this album was actually about the abuse she suffered at the hands of her ex and like, Oh, motherfucker. I mean, again, this record is about trauma, and it's the closest you can get to being traumatized without actually being traumatized. It's trauma being brought against you by the hands of cruel, controlling people. And yeah, folks, like this, oh, this is what it feels like. It really ain't far off, folks. Like her last record, this one is a genuinely tough ride to take like I mean that too like do not get into this one unless you're ready to deal with some goddamn real ass pain I honestly would not even tell you to listen to this record if you don't think you can handle it but like there are so few records that really nail it on the head like this one does honestly I would almost recommend you check it out just for that like it's <sighs> It's an experience, y'all, it really is. Honestly, there's just no one out there right now who does this better than Lingua Ignota does this. And like, God damn it, Kristen, you poor fucking thing. I just want you to be happy at this point. Seriously, like, just, you know, fuck the music industry, fuck all of these horrible people who keep hurting you and all that. Fuck it all, fuck it into powder, light a match and just don't look back move away to the mountains, become cottage core as fuck, raise goats. Like, look at these goats. Look at these. He's a good boy. He's a good boy. Look at all those good boys being good. Kristen, I, you deserve that. I want you to be Liz Fair happy. That's what I want for you at this point. Just fuck it all, be happy. That's a great motto for life, isn't it? Fuck it all. Be happy. Thank you for the wondrously traumatic music. See that record right there? That record was this close to being my record of the year. Unlike the last handful of records, specifically because of how little I had to engage my brain to enjoy it, the last few records I've listed have been heavy and hard and huge. And like this one, it just kicks ass. It's just a vibe. It's just a good ass punk record that punks the fuck out and just punks everything up to 11, it's screamy, it's outrageous, it's riotous, it's raucous, it's fun, it's all over the walls. This album is 
just screaming and angry and righteous and visceral and distinctively Korean. Reminds me of a roommate I used to have. Yeah, I honestly loved this record because I didn't have to turn my brain on in order to enjoy it. It's just probably one of the best pure hardcore records that came out this year, just period. It harkens a lot of its sound from that nice and dirty 80s and 90s DC and SoCal scene, and they've got a vocalist that can just peel paint off the walls with her shriek. Good lord. I wish more of the imports we got out of Korea sounded like this instead of... I like the moon rock with me, baby. You know, I don't even hate K-pop necessarily. I just... I hate what it does to my friends. But it's absolutely an album you can just turn your brain off to and just rock the fuck out to. This was the kind of year where anything that would allow me to shut my brain off for a few minutes and just enjoy it was a fucking blessing. And like this album, yeah. Yeah, absolutely, this was the one. If I were still the rock critic, this would easily be album of the year. Easy taker, just probably the best punk record that came out all year. But, well, it's a good thing I'm not the rock critic anymore. Cause like, oh, I don't know y'all, in a year where so very little could penetrate through the dark, ugly fog that was cr clouding my mind this year, it was hard to even pick a record of the year. This was a year where I really had to fight back against a lot of my demons, and they landed a lot of visceral blows to me. This year, I just felt like the whole time I was bleeding. Bleeding my interest in music, bleeding my sanity, bleeding my faith in people and the world at large. Shit was not easy to deal with this year. You know, I'm sure y'all could tell too, you know, cause I didn't handle everything super well. I got kind of grumpy, grouchy, and I would get really moody and shitty. Those angry black dogs of depression and just trauma. Through it all, I'd say there was one album that encouraged me. One album that gave me the most hope. One album that helped me realize that despite it all, through it all, throughout everything I was suffering, I could still find a way to smile with no teeth. This one's probably a surprise. I did actually Fimmy this one earlier in the year, and I wasn't, I mean, I was really into it, but I wasn't like five out of five. But y'all, this one grew on me. The weirder things got throughout the year, the more I just understood what this album was about, you know? Like this record, again, it's why, like, I don't know, the Femi series was always just first impressions, you know, you should never... I'm gonna stop scoring albums from here on in, bit of a spoiler alert there, because, I don't know, the scores are meaningless. They're meaningless for everyone. Because yeah, my first impression was like, ooh, this is some damn good hip hop. And then by the end of the year, I was like, Genesis, oh, you, oh, you're, you're right here. You are right here in my fucking cerebrum how'd you get there this album grew on me like a motherfucker as the year went on in a big way genesis owusu is such a goddamn artist yeah he's great at hip-hop yeah he's got bars for days but he is also a damn eloquent singer a ferocious as hell poet and his lyrics are just next level people again Maybe that's because a great deal of this album actually deals with, like, depression and being in a dark, ugly place. And that was the mood for 2021! But again, as the year went on and things got kinda darker and uglier for me, I started to understand this record a lot more. It broke through. This was the album to penetrate the darkness 
for me. Everything else worked with the darkness to penetrate. This one actually just broke through and gave me that ray of hope, you know? It's not a sunshiny record either by any means. It deals really frankly with a lot of heavy topics, including mental health, systematic racism, and just trying to keep your head on straight in a world that insists on being topsy-turvy. But Genesis just brings so much life and vibrance to it all. I guess you can call this a hip hop record if you want, but it's also got a ton of like soul, funk, jazz, and even rock to it, people. This album does bang when it wants to. I mean, this guy's just channeling everybody from Sly and the Family Stone to The Clash to A Tribe Called Quest to Prince to just fucking everybody. It's so eclectic on top of being just so in your chest, raw, and at the heart, you know? That Silk Sonic record, for example, was a damn fine imitation of funk, soul, and hip hop, but this album soars above it for being an innovation of all those things. It's a record that's honest and human and genuine, and most important, to me at least, hopeful. Like, no joke, people, these videos that I just put out here almost didn't happen at all because, like, like, I do genuinely wish I could just come out here in front of y'all and tell you that I found that one thing or that one album or that whatever that made all my demons go away forever and I'm 1000% in a better place and I'll never get shitty on Twitter ever, ever again. I'm an angel, good boy now, goodest of boys. But y'all, I'd be lying because it's a journey and I ain't done walking it yet. You don't see the summer without holding the rain. You don't get the feeling without touching the pain. But I am working on it. That day job that was driving me crazy. I finally quit that job at the end of the year. I said enough was enough and my mental health is not worth this. I found a new job and I was able to move on. Like I also mentioned, I've been in therapy for the last four or five months and even though that Whitechapel section got a little realer than I was intending it to, it has been extremely productive in facing a lot of those issues. And just in general, I am making a lot more strides to just do better by myself. I'm exercising again, going out more, making an effort to try new things, meet new people, live life again. You know, doing my best. I know it's a pandemic and everything is 50 times harder than it was before the dark times, but like, you know what? I'm doing my best. And that's my New Year's resolution for 2022. Just, just try to do better by me. I mean, I certainly can't do better by y'all if I don't do better by myself. And somewhere along the line, I forgot that lesson. That might mean you might not see me quite as much as you're used to seeing me over here, but I don't plan on quitting or anything. I'm just not gonna overwork myself and burn myself out, become a ugly mess like I did towards the end of this year. Like, I'm just gonna keep working on things and I'm gonna do my best to just live and be happy and make the content that I wanna make for me. I'll probably fuck up a million times in the process of trying this, but hey, that's how we learn. That's what learning is. It's a process. I'm gonna try to keep smiling even if I got no teeth to do it with, you know? I really, truly appreciate y'all's patience this year, or whatever that may be worth. Just thanks. And thanks to all these lovely artists who gave us a wonderful year of music in 2021. Y'all, I'm Crash Thompson. Thanks again for watching, and I will see you when I see ya. Now you won't stand, darling. Now I'm the blackest dog up on the land, darling. Yeah, I built your castle on the sand, darling. Yeah, I'm making ways for you. I'm making ways for you, yeah. Just follow me, honey. We'll take a trip into the sea, honey. A float is never what you need, honey. I'll take the air from you. I'll take the mother from you.
would be a tragedy if I lost the deck. Whew. Okay, if the mic picked that up, that's definitely an outtake.